All new tonight of the case against Casey Anthony. We have the audio recordings of what Casey said to deputies in their patrol car right after she was arrested for Kaylee's murder. That's the latest to come out of a huge amount of evidence that was released today. Our team of reporters has been going through the videos, the audio recordings, and documents all day. Channel 9's Jeff Deal joins us live now at the Orange County Jail to begin our team coverage. Jeff? Yeah, Marty, I listened to the audio recordings of Casey Anthony in the back of that patrol car while she was on her way back to jail. She sounded calm. She sounded confident. She joked around with investigators, and she even told them that she wasn't going to be tricked into any kind of confession. You know what you're in custody for, right? Yes. On October 14th, the day of her fourth arrest, Casey Anthony spoke with calm confidence in the back of a patrol car, even though just moments earlier she was taken on a wild ride. First, her mother behind the wheel cut across traffic trying to elude the media. Then, after going under an overpass, Casey switched cars, where investigators say her attorney then tried to run a car of undercover officers off the road. Mr. Baez. Yes. Mr. Crazy Driver. Uh huh? <laughs> While on her way to jail, Casey Anthony told investigators she thought it was a news van they were trying to run off the road. A few minutes later, though, investigators steered the conversation back toward the murder case. Do you have any interest in helping us? They asked Casey for an interview, a chance to share what she knows. Casey said that she would with her lawyer present, but cautioned investigators. I was put in a position where. Someone's trying to trick a confession well, I don't want to, no, and don't, that's don't. not going to happen. Then, before she was marched into jail, she insisted once again she was not involved with Kaylee's death. I'll uh, take this as far as I need to to prove my innocence. And, of course, that interview never happened. And on the recording, investigators even told Casey that her attorney, Jose Baez, had already declined their offer to allow her to sit down and answer questions. Reporting live at the Orange County Jail, Jeff Deal, Channel 9, Eyewitness News. And tonight, we're hearing for the first time how jail officers describe Casey's reaction on December 11th, before anyone really knew whether the remains that were found that day were Kaylee's. Channel 9's Kathy Bellich has the recording of jail officers who described Casey's emotional reaction as she saw our special report. On a rain-soaked morning in December, our special report showed investigators found what they believed were Kaylee's remains, less than a half mile from Mother Casey Anthony's house. Investigators say no one knew for sure at that time except Casey, and that's why she reacted the way she did that morning at the jail. She collapsed into the chair and started to what appeared to be hyperventilating. Her hands started to sweat. She started rubbing them profusely. She was in um, waist chains and... Um, handcuffs and she kept saying the waist chains are getting tighter and tighter I mean please loosen on them. Jail Sergeant Billy Richardson said they wanted to keep Casey away from the televisions but she had already heard the news on the radio in her cell. They took her to the medical clinic where there was a television tuned to Channel 9. She tried not to watch but she could hear our report. She showed uh, signs of dis despair with, uh, with the way she was holding herself trying to um, pull herself in. She's like, no, no, I won't hurt myself, but she did ask for a sedative. Right. Not normal for her. That, was, that is, in fact, the first drug she has taken while she is in jail. Later, Casey said something that startled Lieutenant Tammy Unser. Well, I can't cry. I can't break down and cry because this isn't real. Um, and then she started talking about football. In Orange County, Kathy Bellich, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. FBI investigators interviewed Casey a short time after she was indicted for murder in October. Even then, she told investigators that she had mother's intuition and it told her that Kaylee was alive. I know that she's alive. Whether you have a bucket load of evidence downstairs that contradicts that and says otherwise, or all you have is speculation or, or nothing at all. FBI investigators told Casey they did, in fact, have a lot of evidence against her. But there are still questions tonight about whether Kaylee's remains could have been found four months earlier. Deputy Richard Kane was called out to the scene in August when meter reader Roy Kronk first spotted something suspicious. After that incident came to light, investigators questioned Kane about how he handled that tip. First, he claimed he spotted a bag and it turned out to be nothing. Then he admitted that was a lie. Name three other things that it could have been beside a bag. Could have been a piece of dark clothing, could have been, uh, I don't know, a shirt. 
Deputy Kane is under an internal investigation and is now on desk duty. A secret recording of Lee Anthony gave some insight into how Casey may operate. I want to figure out <laughs> what Casey I'm dealing with, you know what I mean? Like, I know there's the Casey that would, she doesn't care about anybody else but herself and her daughter. And then there's the Casey that will put her daughter in front of everybody else. And that's, I think, the person that I'm trying to get open up to open up to me. Investigators convinced Casey's ex-boyfriend, Tony Lazaro, to allow them to install four different cameras inside his car, all to record his conversation with Lee Anthony. Lee admitted he doesn't think his sister ever searched for Kaylee. He also said she's been deceitful since middle and high school. If you would like to see more of the video and listen to the audio release today, log on to our website, WFTV.com.